Perhaps we should ask the last poet to Joe Scott Harrell for permission to speak before we start. Some of my contemporaries act like we created the art when they none of us take no part to the charts for anything we write. Gil Scott Heron has seen them twice. Once for the bottle, and then for Johannesburg, that we stand and serve the listeners as if the pirate is on stage with us on their shoulders, trying to hold us upright while we position ourselves as God's gift to the stage and the mic when Lord knows they were traveling the globe long before some of us would even flex the blank our parent eyes. And we felt romanticized, the point that the apparent size of our egos supersedes those facts, like spoken words just waiting for us to be born, but we're still born before that. And they don't even go back and come out of our little Kalani Yasalama, Keith Rose, the furthest their legacy goes is their local spam culture, open mic poetry in those days. Can't be bothered to go back as far as they were Sunday dollars, and can't understand why I demand such a high level of respect in this new generation of poetry, but it's perhaps it's because I have the sense and the reverence to study the ones that came before me. Been, been checking the Giovanni ever since I could read them. Sonia Sanchez is like my baby, like Bessie Smith, like Big Mama, pulling the pitchfork in the blues on a crossroads paved with wayward souls. These be the blues that flow deep below the floodboard of the Tupelo, and they look at me like so. So, what could they possibly know about how Langston Jones was the first among us to earn a living off of his words? Especially when it's like a hundred years later, and they're still hopping from their balls at work trying to create some type of cubicle masterpiece. And they can't be asked to read about those weeks they wanted to publish a book of poor American poems with advocates of Britain to do it, because to them that's just foolish. They live in an age where anyone can publish anything as long as they have access to a computer. And they feel like the only reason they mean they bring it out is because the people who are listening to their work must be stupid. But, but could it be an over reliance on monotonic monologue prose? Could it be a lack of originality and a failure to pay dues? Could it be the mortgage leap the bus and train stations, the more your experience with brown texture and cadence? Could it be the more you're forced to skip meals, the less you worship at the terror and begin to concern yourself with what working people consider real? To the extent you believe this art to be perceived as incomprehensibly smart, you'll be finished with spoken words long before your dumbass even has strength enough to ask for permission to start. <laughs>